science, because in the end, uh, this is going to be the topic of this course. Uh, science of combustion is basically things that you know already. Uh, not all of them, but many of them. It's a mixture of um, thermo chemistry, this is thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, fluid mechanics, of course, at NSET you all know about this, transport, and chemical kinetics. I'm going to, to go through these four fields to show you what we're going to be doing in the next, uh, in the next sessions. Okay, thermo chemistry. Uh, thermochemistry, you've, you've done that before, a long time ago. Okay? The, the simplest thermochemistry, thermochemical equation is this one. You take, for example, methane, you add oxygen. Usually, we get the oxygen in two ways. Uh, you can buy the oxygen, you go to air liquid, for example, they're going to sell you pure oxygen, uh, which is very expensive. There's, there, there is another place, of course, where you can find oxygen, it's just in the air which is nice, which, for example, in this room, you get oxygen. The problem is you get it also with other gases. Mainly you get it with nitrogen. And so the idea for air is that you get one, mole, one mole of oxygen for 3.76 mole of uh, nitrogen. This is what we're going to use throughout this course. <coughs> so if you burn this thing, you're going to find CO2, H2O, and the nitrogen is just sitting here. It doesn't do anything. So this is the simplest example of uh, thermochemical equation. Now, hydrocarbons, there are many of them. The first one, the simplest one, with no carbon, actually, is hydrogen. Hydrogen, usually, we burn it as a gas. Methane, CH4. Propane, C3H8. Those, this is what you find. Methane is what you find in your house. Propane is what you find if you, if you buy bottles. And then you go, of course, to gasoline, which is liquid, which is what you burn in your car and you go to kerosene, which is what you burn in an aircraft. Now, this is a very, very simplified view. Uh, if you go to gasoline, for example, gasoline is not C8H18. Gasoline is this plus maybe 300 other components. Okay, it's a full mixture. When you go to oil companies, they don't deliver pure CHH18. They give you all kinds of mixtures. Um, and usually we burn these uh, things with air or with oxygen. As I said, we will consider throughout this course that air is a mixture of oxygen plus uh, 3.76 moles of nitrogen or pure oxygen. Why do we take pure oxygen? Well, if you go to places where there is no air, submarine or rocket engine, then of course you need to take your oxygen with you. You're not going to carry the air. You're going to take pure oxygen. Now, um, classical example of things you need to know for the, the control. Uh, if you cannot do that, you're, you're going to be in trouble. If you burn out in general CNHM plus O2, you can find the coefficients here. You start with the carbon, so it's NCO2. You continue with hydrogen, with, uh, uh, hydrogen yes, and then you finish with O2. This you've done before. If you have air, you just add N2 here, and the, the, uh, the nitrogen remains on both sides. It doesn't play a role for the moment. So this, this was the simplest chemistry, the one you've done before. Now in practice, when I've written this equation here, I have assumed that I could find one mole of CH4 for two moles of oxygen. But there is no reason for that. Uh, it would be very lucky in practice if you, every time you find one mole of methane, you can find two moles of oxygen. In many cases, what you have is F mole of methane and two moles of oxygen, and F can be anything. And F is uh, directly linked to something we will call the equivalence ratio. And uh, if F is less than one, we call it lean combustion. If S F is more than one, we call it rich combustion. <coughs> and of course, if you need now to work on this equation where you don't have F equal to one, you get different results now. For example, if combustion is lean, you don't have enough methane for everything you need to burn, so there will be oxygen left in the burned gases because you don't have enough of this methane to burn this oxygen. And it's the other way. If F is larger than unity, you have too much CH4 here, so there will be CH4 left in the, in the burned gases. A general point to make here is that this is much better than that. Why? Well, here you're wasting your fuel. Okay? You have too much fuel. And fuel is expensive, so you don't want to go in this regime. And the other problem here is that when you get rich combustion, you get a lot of dirty things left in the burned gases. 
you get uh, uh, CH4 here, which goes to other molecules, CX, HY, things which are not good for your health, so it's much better to work with lean combustion. What's happening in real systems? <coughs> in a gasoline engine, in your car, if you have a, a classical uh, engine, the values of F, the value of Deacon's ratio is 1. It's not because of combustion, it's because of what we need to do to clean the burned gases. Um, it could be less than 1 actually, but it's not today. So in the new engines called direct injection, there are not that many on the road today, but there are quite a few. Uh, for example, the first one was the famous Mitsubishi, probably 5 or 6 years ago now. Um, in those engines, you can decrease the cons ratio to 0.4, so you can save a lot of fuel. Uh, in a gas turbine, you can go to 0.3 to 1, typically for the equivalence ratio. In a Formula 1 engine, the equivalence ratio is 1.2. Uh, of course, you don't care in a Formula 1 engine about consumption. The, these engines burn about 100 liters for per 100 kilometers, so it's not very efficient. But there is a reason for that, and we will see that uh, in the next courses, is that this is the place where the efficiency is the largest, the flame speed is the largest. Same thing for motorcycle engine. Uh, except you cannot buy them anymore, but a few, a few years ago you could still have motorcycle engines which were running rich. So basically it costs you a lot of money. You need to put more fuel to have the same power. Now, <coughs> um, the, when I've written an equation like this, there is something I did not discuss. I said, I have these things, I ignite them and then burn, and I got these things. And I never cared about the speed at which this reaction takes place. And this is an important question. Uh, why is it important? Well, because if this speed is too low, it will never happen. In an engine, you get a certain size for the engine. The combustion has to take place within the engine, not outside. Okay? If, if it's outside, it's too late. So it's very important to know how fast you go from one state to another. And this is the field of what we call chemical kinetics. Chemical kinetics, the objective of this science, it's not something I'm going to go into details here because it's a complete science in itself, its objective is to tell you how much time you need to go from here to there. It seems like a simple question at first, but if you think it's a simple question, you, you, you're going to be in trouble later, because if you want to understand <coughs> how these things happen, then you need to go into many more details. So let me just take the simplest of all, which is hydrogen. Uh, the reaction of combustion of hydrogen is simple. You take hydrogen plus oxygen gives water. Nothing simpler than that. In practice, uh, these things never happen. In this world, if you mix hi and burn hydrogen and oxygen, you will never have this reaction. Never. Never happens. What's happening is much more complicated than that. Uh, and this is the field of chemists. The chemists, where they tell you, they tell you, okay, if you want to talk about hydrogen, oxygen, chemistry, you need to realize you need to care about elements here, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. And you have not only species which are hydrogen and oxygen and water, but you have to care also about all, the, all these guys here. And if you want to talk about reactions, those are the reactions you need to take into account. So you see, for example, H2 plus O2, when they meet, they will not do water, they will produce OH, two molecules of OH. Then this OH, when it meets H2, will do H2O plus H, etc., etc. And you need to care for all these reactions at the same time, if you want to predict how the global reaction takes place. Of course, at the end, if you start with one mole of hydrogen, one mole of oxygen, you will end up with one mole of water. But in between, all these things will have been formed and will have disappeared. And to predict the speed at which this will happen, you need to care about that. If you don't do that, that won't work. And uh, the first guy who realized that and set up standards to predict these things is uh, Arrhenius again. And um, you will see here, this file here, is actually something that we call Kemkin standard. In this world, there's been a nice effort in the community of combustion 30 years ago, probably, where people have tried to organize all these schemes in the same way so that we can capitalize all the knowledge that people get. And so if you see here, this is the simplest scheme for hydrogen. You get uh, nine species and maybe 19 reactions. If you talk about uh, gasoline, for example, instead of nine species, you're going to have about 300. And instead of 19 reactions, you're going to have three to four or five thousand. Okay. And uh, of course, now things get complicated. If you just want to solve the equations to understand those things, it's going to take quite a while. And this is a big part 
of commission science. Not the part I'm working with. It's a, it's a painful part because, of course, when you get uh, 4,000 reactions, if one of them is wrong, nothing's going to work. So it's, uh, it's, it's an important job. Why is it difficult? Well, because flames <coughs> are fronts, basically. If you look at, your, at a lighter or at the flame I've just shown you, it's something here where you have the initial gases, so for example, methane and oxygen, and then on the other side, you get the burn gases. And here in between, we get, you have the place, which is called the flame, and it's a flame front, so it's very thin. The thickness here is less than 0.1 millimeter, typically. And in this zone here, everything will be happening. So everything I've shown you here, all these reactions, will take place here in a very, very small zone. So if you want to understand what's going on, if you want to measure anything, if you want to compute anything, you need to be able to compute things which are extremely uh, thin, where all the reactions happen extremely fast, and that's, that's a pain. So just to, uh, uh, to make things clear, I have talked about thermochemistry and I've talked about chemical kinetics. I just want to make the difference between the two again. The thermochemistry deals with the initial and the final state. And it's totally independent of the speed at which one goes from one initial to final state. So it's basically, you're taking the train from Paris to Toulouse, okay? It's just saying that you're on the track from Paris to Toulouse. It doesn't tell you if you're going to go there in one hour or in one year. It's not the field of thermochemistry. It tells you. If you keep going on that track, eventually you will reach this stage. If you want to know more about the speed, then you need to go to chemical kinetics. Uh, we'll... Uh, come back to that in the next uh, sessions, but uh, on, the, on the display here on the website, uh, you can find more information on that and more examples. So chemical kinetics now, this is the science which will tell you how fast you go from one state to another. You get, you're going from Paris to Toulouse and you're going with the TGV, so okay, it's going to take you five hours to do it. No, TGV not everywhere. Uh, and to do that, you need to know much more information. You don't need to know only the track. You need to know which train, you need to know the speed of the train, etc., etc. So chemical kinetics is a little bit more complicated than thermochemistry. Okay, let's talk a little bit about what we're burning now. <clears throat> I'm sure everyone in this room has followed a course on uh, uh, aerodynamics. Okay? Um, you, have, uh, looked, uh, you have studied the Navier-Stokes equations, and probably you have looked at the uh, uh, pressure losses in tubes and flow around uh, wings, etc. When you were doing that, <coughs> implicitly, no one told you, but you were using a simplified set of equations. And in this course, I'm going to show you the full set of equations. You were basically studying only air. All the gas which was flowing for you was air. So it was a mixture of oxygen and nitrogen. So typically, uh, probably you have seen that, you remember it. You have, uh, uh, when you have this mixture for classical, what I will call classical air, you have 32 grams of oxygen here. You have 105 grams of nitrogen. So the total is here. And uh, the, vol the, mass the, vol the mass fraction of O2 here in this mixture is fixed. It's always the same. It's the mass of O2 divided by the total mass. It's this famous 23% in mass in terms of oxygen mass. Now, the molecular weight of air is not 137. Like I see that almost every year at the... Uh, the final uh, exam, uh, it's this number divided by 4.76, okay, because you need to know the weight of one mole. So it's the famous 28.8, sometimes you take 29 gram per mole. And in the state equation, when you write P equal RT, R is equal to 288 joule per kilogram in Kelvin. And uh, the CP of this gas is also of the order of 1,000 joule per kilogram in Kelvin. So this is what's been used in all the books and all the courses you have taken up to now. The problem is, in combustion, it's more complicated now because it's not only air we have. The air will change. Instead of uh, oxygen, we're going to produce CO2. So we need to take into account the fact that we're going to burn things. So instead of these things, we're going to have a mixture with all these gases. As I said, between 100 to 3,000 species, maybe. And so that makes our life more complicated now. We cannot only solve for velocity and pressure and all these things like you did before. We need to solve for what we call the composition. So what is the composition? Well, the composition is the 